If you want to have a decentralized storage for your Web3 application, IPFS is a great choice, but it's not easy to use. With the Web3 Storage API, you can easily upload files to IPFS with a simple REST API. In this video, I will give you a step-by-step -step coding tutorial to use the Web3 Storage API. If you are new here, I'm Julian, and on In The Blocks, I teach blockchain development. Before we introduce Web3 Storage, we need to talk of Protocol Labs. Protocol Labs is an open source R&D lab. It's the team behind IPFS, Filecoin, and Web3 Storage. IPFS is a decentralized file system. In IPFS, there is a network of nodes which stores data. Anybody can store and retrieve data from this network. When you store data, the content is retrievable thanks to the hash of the data. This way, clients can check that the data they get has not been altered. Even though IPFS is decentralized, it's not a blockchain. There is no guarantee of data availability. If you want to make sure that your data is available, you either have to run your own IPFS node or pay another IPFS node to pin your data. And this leads us to Filecoin, the next project created by Protocol Labs. Filecoin is a decentralized storage market built on top of IPFS. Technically, it provides a protocol to incentivize IPFS nodes to pin your data by paying them with FIL token, the token of Filecoin. This is a market and the bigger the demand for storage, the higher the price of storage and conversely. Filecoin is great, but it's still too low level for application developers who just want an easy solution for storing data on IPFS. And that's why we need to go one level higher and talk about Web3 Storage. Web3 Storage is an API to store your data on IPFS. It's built on top of IPFS and Filecoin. With IPFS, it provides decentralized storage and with a Filecoin, it provides data persistence. And all of this accessible with a simple HTTP API. No need to get into the details of a Filecoin or the IPFS protocol. Web3 Storage also provides data redundancy by storing your data on several IPFS nodes. And it's completely free to use up to one terabyte of data. So now you get the big picture, let's get our hands dirty and start using the API of Web3 Storage. So in this section, we're going to upload files to IPFS very easily by using Web3 Storage and for that, we are going to follow their quick start tutorial. So your first task will be to create a free account on Web3 Storage. So you go to their website, you click on login and you create a new account so you can use your email or directly log in with github is even faster and after you will be redirected to your dashboard and if you scroll down you will see a button to create an api token so that's what we're going to do so you give it a name create and now you have your token and after we go back to the tutorial so for the prerequisite, you need to have Node.js version 14 minimum as well as NPM version 7. So just to make it clear, you can use Web3 Storage with any language, Python, Rust, etc. But in this tutorial, we're going to use Node.js. Okay, so then we'll scroll down, create an account, get an API token. We already did it. So after you are going to create a new folder for this tutorial, and uh, we're gonna create a new file, put files.js. I'm gonna copy paste this code. And so I open my code editor and I'm going to create a new file, touch put files.js. All right, so let's open this. And uh, we're going to copy the code from the tutorial. All right, so let's walk through this code. So first we import the process module from Node.js. This is to access the command line arguments. Then we import a library that we're going to install called Minimist to easily pass the command line argument into a JavaScript object. Then we import the JavaScript library of Web3 Storage. And here the most important is Web3 Storage. This is an object to easily use the API. And here this is a utility function. So we define our function and first with the minimist library, we pass the argument provided to the script and then we extract the API token. So here we do some checks. After we instantiate our connection to the Web3 Storage API by providing the token, we also define 
an array of files that we're going to upload to IPFS and we're going to loop through all the files that we provided as argument to our script and after we use the utility function get files from pass so if the pass is already a file it's just going to be an array with a single element otherwise if this is a directory it's going to give you an array of all the files inside and after we use the spread operator to spread this array and add all the elements inside to the files array and after we are going to store our files into IPFS with this line here storage.put and after in return it's going to give us a CID so that's the identifier for our data and we're going to print this and here we execute our main function all right so let's go back to the tutorial uh, and we need to create a package.json file so let's copy this uh, let's go back to our code editor and we're going to create a package.json all right uh, let's paste what we got from the tutorial and here we can see our two dependency minimist and web3.storage okay so after we need to install our dependency with npm install all right so we have all our dependency installed so next let's go back to the tutorial all right so now we are going to run the script and for that we will need to create a file so uh, in your command line let's create a file my file dot txt all right uh, and here we'll just put hello world but of course you can upload any kind of file text file an image etc and after we are going to run the script so and for the token here we're going to copy paste our token from our dashboard so let's copy this uh, all right and after for the file name this is going to be my file.txt okay so now let's press enter and now our file is on IPFS and we can see the CID here, the content identifier. So let's go back to the tutorial and after how we can get our file. So we go to this URL and we replace here by ICID. So let's do this uh, and here for the CID. Okay, let's copy one more time back in my browser okay and here we can see the list of all our file and if we click on my file.txt then we can see our file and here you can see the url structure this is cid.ipfs.dweb.link slash the name of the file so in the code of your application you can easily reconstruct the url to your file by using the cid that web3 storage gave you and now if you go to your web storage dashboard you can also see the files you uploaded if you go to files here you can see the detail so the name of the file the cid the size and here it gives you the pin status so that means at this stage your file is available in ipfs but this is only for 48 hours and in 48 hours it's going to be garbage collected by ipfs nodes if you don't do anything but web storage is going to pin it for you which will persist your file on ipfs and if you want it's also possible to upload files directly from your dashboard without using any code all right so that's the end of the tutorial so here they suggest you a couple of next steps so you can check out some example project in the github repo of web storage you can also check out this deep dive into storing files with this how to guide you also have some guide for retrieving your data you can also explore the full documentation for the api so now you know how to use web3 storage to easily upload files to ipfs it's the easiest way to use ipfs for your web3 application it's free to use and i highly recommend it if you haven't created an account yet go to the website of web3 storage and start playing with it a good follow-up to this video is the image gallery tutorial this can be very useful to create your own nft i put all the relevant links in the description that's it for this video bye